What's up YouTube? Mike here with another video and today I wanted to do my review of the iPhone 13 Pro. So let's get into it. Alright, so this is going to be a pretty simple quick video. I've had this since launch day, so it's been a couple months and the reason I haven't made a video about it is because, well, it's an iPhone. They're fairly kind of boring in a way. Not saying boring in a bad way, but uh, this looks exactly like the iPhone 12 Pro for the most part. They kind of shuffled away the, around the way the camera modules are a little bit. Essentially, you've got the same phone with a few upgrades, which I'll get into. So, obviously, first thing, let's talk about the build quality of this thing. I mean, it's outstanding. I really love the, uh, the squared off design. I like how the display is flat. Um, and this thing is built like a tank. Now this is a graphite model. I've had this in a case since day one. As you can see, I've also got a screen protector, but the build on this has been second to none. And really, there's only one complaint I have about this device at all, which I'll get into. So uh, next, we'll talk about the performance of this. Again, performance of this, it's an iPhone. That's really all you need to say. It's awesome. It's got the latest and greatest processor. I mean, you're not going to have any slowdowns with this. Now, as far as the cameras go, I still think... Apple could do some improvements. These are still all 12 megapixel, which Samsung is all the way up to 108 megapixel. And I just really prefer the photos and video that you get out of the S21 Ultra and even the Note 20 Ultra for that fact. So I think Apple, hopefully in the next iteration, will bump up the cameras a little bit. I'm not saying by any means it takes bad cameras or bad pictures or video. And depending on which YouTube channel you watch, everybody says that this does the best video. But again, at this point, all the phones are so close, it's more of a subjective thing. So in my opinion, I like Samsung's S21 Ultra video samples better. But this does do fantastic uh, video. And again, it does great pictures. But I still think that the pictures you can get from an S21 Ultra are better. So this has been out for a couple months now. So... All the samples are out there, so you guys can search those. But obviously it's an iPhone, so you know it takes good pictures and it does good video. Now perhaps the biggest improvement of this, again, is the new ProMotion display, which basically means it's got a 120 hertz display now. But for me personally, I can't tell the difference. The only way you can really tell the difference is if you record this in slow-mo and then you swipe really fast, which who's going to do that? And then you can see the difference. But to my eyes, I don't see the difference. Now where the improvement is to me is with this ProMotion display, depending on what you're doing, it will either be faster or slower. And that translates into a massive battery gain. So the battery life on this is fantastic. Now this is the Pro model, not the Max. So even with this, it's a two day phone, easy. I use this fairly heavily and I've rarely dropped below 50% when I put it on the charger at night. This is by far got the best battery of any phone I've ever used. And again, the 12 Pro Max has about two to four hours more. Just kind of keep that in mind if you're looking for a phone with great endurance. All right, again, so I'm trying to keep this review under five minutes and the reason I've not really, again, done a video on this for so long is because it's an iPhone, like I said, it's fairly unchanged, it's fairly underwhelming. iOS is still iOS, which again, going from Samsung, this is the first iPhone I've actually used for about three years. The last iPhone I owned was an iPhone XR. And going to this, I always feel like I'm kind of taking a step back in the software arena because simple things like an always on display, being able to have two apps open at once. I mean, I always just feel like I just take a little bit of a step back when it comes to using iOS and it has nothing to do with the hardware it's all the software all right so besides iOS itself I'm going to get into the one thing that I think is the biggest crutch of the iPhone and that is the lightning port why Apple did not put a USB type-c on this when all their iPads that are coming out have USB type-c and of course the Macs so now with this, you can do the Apple ProRes video, which I haven't played with, honestly, because I don't care, because the files are so freaking large. Um, you're going to need one. You're going to need the larger, probably one terabyte phone. And then good luck getting that off of the device with this crappy 
lightning port. So there is the bottleneck. So again, ProRes video, it's pretty cool, but good luck getting it off because it's going to take forever using the stupid lightning port. Again, to me, that's one of the biggest reasons they should have upgraded this port, and that is for ProRes getting it off of the phone. So like I said, this is a simple review. I mean, go back and watch an iPhone 12 Pro review, and it's pretty much going to be the exact same, with the exception of better battery life, the addition of ProRes, and then, again, slightly better performance. That's always the case with Apple. Slightly better cameras, slightly better battery, and then better performance. With that, quick down and dirty, like I said, I really wasn't even going to make a video about this because, you know, it's an iPhone. What can you say? They're pretty much the same year after year. As always, if you guys enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you've got any questions, make sure you drop it in the comments below. And again, I always appreciate you guys watching. So, later.